we're here, Fanatic fans. I'm surprised in the house. Fanatic fans here as well. Um, bold, but very softly delivered words from Humanoid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think they just kind of team fight. I mean, a little bit self-deprecating. They don't got anything know. else. <laughs> you know, like, fair enough. That's the thing about tweets that I like. You know, the trash talk tweets that oh, Shox yeah, yeah. alluded to earlier. It's like, you can infer whatever tone you want. So if you're really hyped up about the matchup, yeah. you just they're read screaming. everything like they're screaming yeah. at each other. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. But when you see someone say it and it's kind of like, Mer, you know, you're like, all right. It does feel a little bit biased when usually Noah includes a squirrel or something afterwards. And uh, you're just like, oh, he's clearly been the goal. What can I do? Players taken to the stage, our cameraman beautifully highlighting a matchup. We're excited about Razor versus Yankos. Support as well, Jun and Trimby. Seems like a good mood in the Heretics camp. Always a good sign of things to come. And while we look back at this matchup, you know, it's not necessarily the biggest historic rivalry. It was Fnatic who denied Heretics their shot at season finals previously. So maybe a little bit of revenge here. Of course, that particular version of Fnatic did sub in Wonder to make it to the season finals, finals, finals. Um, so hard to know how much of that bad blood is attributed to Wonder, but obviously two teams and a lot of players at least with a decent amount of history. Yeah, I'm very excited to see both these squads face off. I think it's going to be an absolute banger. I want to see a little bit more productivity from Heretics in the early stages though. When we look at their last series, it kind of went to the point of, hey, we're just going to look to scale into the late game. We're not really worried about trying to yeah. fight toe to toe in the early stages. And I think against a team like Fnatic, if you give them that much control in the early game, it's going to come back to bite you. But already into draft, no surprises. Nico going to be taking away from Spyro. He's 100% ban rate against the guy at the moment. Uh, yes, and of course, one of the teams that learned firsthand how effective Spyro is on that champion is Fnatic. They had an incredibly dominant early game, playing through topside, shutting Wonder down, and then spent the mid game not counting minions, watching as a Yanko sleeps in and a Spyro Nico kind of dissected so much of what they wanted to do and ultimately got Team Heretics the victory. There was a um, particular Overtuned baby dragon <laughs> in that game, but still, they've had something to do with it. Yes, reminder that we do still need to see that diligence from Fnatic, who have now, you know, banned two champions. Of course, the Spyro has been successful on. We need to see how much deeper his his pool goes because it really has been the Azir and Nico where he's had the most standout performances thus far. Still seeing a lot of things like the Callista left open though, which is crazy. Oh, okay, never mind, it's going to be banned away there. But I was going to say, you still have like Zeri and stuff that has been very high party for Noah. I think he's been one of his best performing champions. So maybe that's what they look to try and take on this next rotation. But oftentimes we've seen it taken on red side in this one two selection. And with Oriana taken, maybe we see Zyro try and bring out something a little bit special. We've seen a lot of people go towards the Aurelian Soul into this matchup, but. We'll have to see if Zyra has it in his back pocket. If that's something that he wants to go towards, yeah, for now, we've seen in the playoffs at least. It's been control mages through and through. The Zeri and the Rek'Sai now locked in. And we haven't really seen jungle Rek'Sai, so just assuming that that's an immediate blind pick for top lane. Wouldn't surprise me if Team Heretics want to just, you know, deprioritize Wonder. Say, hey, here's a strong pick in the meadow. You don't need a counter pick. We can save that for another role, another position. Potentially wanting to give Zyro more time to figure out how to deal with the comp as a whole. But um, Fnatic ready to match fire with fire here in terms of bot lane scaling. Okay, yeah, they're going to take the Nautilus away because one of the things you could have seen in this rotation for Heretics is that they take the Nautilus and then you ban away things like the Braum and answers that have been traditionally pretty good into it. But I am curious now what Trimby wants to take in this bot lane because Rakan is left open. He could end up taking that. It's not the best of matchups in the lane into the Nautilus, but at least when you get to the later portion of the game, you can be very proactive on this pick. Works pretty well with this area as well just because of that mobility. But we'll have to see exactly what the answer is. Also, could look towards the mid lane, but okay. Jarvan. Now gonna be the selection here. We saw Jarvan earlier in the hands of El Yo Yo was a champion that when it's not able to find those early ganks, falls behind a lot of the other uh, more conventional jungle options in the meta. So expect Yankos to be on the map fast and early or really not at all. But this seems to be the style that Heretics are going for. These high value early game junglers. We got the Volley Bear in their last series, a lot against SK where they had mega high priority on the first picking it on blue side. And then in this game, going back towards the Jarvan, it feels like they want him to be proactive. And now it's just a case of well, getting rid of champions that can affect that, like the Poppy, and then trying to secure something for Trimby to try and get him active on the map as well, to try and work alongside this. Because I think Fnatic have, well, for all intents and purposes, been an incredibly strong mid jungle. And one of the things we saw from G2 was shutting that down with early skirmish machine towards, you know, the five to 10 minute mark. So I wouldn't be surprised for Heretics to try and take a similar leaf out of G2's book. See if that's the angle they go for. 
Of course, Nautilus was a champion in the series versus SK that Heretics played. It was banned away in all three games. Made things a little bit less clear. Team Heretics very frequently had the luxury of counterpicking from the remaining support pool. This time around, they will have counterpick, but the Nautilus still not available to them. And Fnatic, Renata, obviously conventionally just a universally solid champion, but instead the Rakan respecting Trimby kind of as an engaged player for Team Heretics. If there's any criticism that's been levied against this team, it's kind of like when Trimby's not making stuff happen, very often not a lot happens. But we have seen him fall back a lot to Alistair in these kind of situations where you're playing more on the yeah, defensive yeah. footing and it hasn't worked at the best for Heretics when they have that back foot in that bottom lane where they're not able to get Trimby as active. So curious if he ends up going back towards that option here as well. Um, although, so we're going to go over towards the Ari. So strong mid jungle, a lot of uh, CC and knockups, so great for skirmishes, but I definitely think you're going to be looking to try and get Zeri involved in these fights from Flacket if you want to try and find success with this duo. Definitely. Of course, saw in the previous week press Gowie with a really master class on the Ari, reminding us of how important individual comfort can be, even in the face of things that feel so much stronger in the context of the meta. Is Fido going to find that success on the Ari as well? And a lot of, you know, early to mid game tools. I like to see this from the Tides team, Heretics. Opposite side for Fnatic. It feels like they're just drafting tools to team fight. I'm not gonna lie to you. You've got Oriana, you've got Jinx, obviously reliable scaling. You've got some pretty good engage. You've got decent lane matchups. And if they walk into Sejuani here, it feels like it's crazy front line. <laughs> crazy front line. And a call out potentially just getting followed up here. He wanted to say, hey, all they can do really is team fight. So we're gonna draft a team fight, fully assuming that they're not gonna do much else in the early game and just have better tools for it. <laughs> it kind of. It feels like they've stuck a massive arrow on the map and just gone, hey, I wonder where Razork's going to be, because you're not going to go towards you, dear. Uh -huh. Your Orianna isn't really going to be powerful enough to try and skirmish around that either. So it's, uh, hey, we're going to go bot lane and make sure Noah's fed, because he's going to be our carry. So the entire game for Fnatic <laughs> is protect the Noah. <laughs> Look, it's a respectable game when there's a Jinx on your lineup, but there's Renata now locked in. It's a lot of me melee champions who want to dive into Team Heretics, and uh, Renata's going to do a lot of work. They ban the Rakan. Letting through, I think, a champion that's perceived to be much more powerful. Rakan in the context of the LEC, though, obviously, I feel like a universal power pick for our best supports. So understand how we got here, but could be a bit tricky for Fnatic to navigate. This is going to force out a cleanse from Noah if he wasn't going to itemize it already, because nothing is worse than killing your entire team is a three-item jinx. It also means the Flacky gets to play that a little bit more aggressive. One of the yeah. things that you will struggle with is Azari against a mega Mundo frontline like Fnatic have is trying to position well, trying to make sure you're not getting hit up by you know Nautilus into Sejuani or finding Udyr that access to the back line. So having that little bit of an extra bailout should help in Flak being able to try and carry these yeah. team fights. So I like the pick, but it's just trying to see again how this bot lane ends up panning out because I think that's where the majority of the attention uh, the attention is going to be. And it will be, you know, Raz are trying to influence that lane from the get go. See who can take control in the early game. Lots of fantastic late game tools for the side of Fnatic. A lot more mid game focus on the side of Team Heretics. They're going to need to show us a more proactive game than what we've seen in weeks previously. It was a devastating series versus BDS, a bit better, bit better versus SK. We'll have to hope they just continue that trajectory today against Fnatic. Reminder one best of three, loser goes home and knocked out. No shot at MSI. Winner will get to move on to the best of five against the winner of today's other best of three. So it's all do or die from here on out. WGTBS. Everything else, do or die. Welcome. Nothing too crazy as we enter into the rift. Just having a quick look at a lot of the um, the choices that were taken, but he yeah. did not take cleanse. Thirty seconds until minions spawn. I uh, don't think it's the end of the world. I. Th I I'm just going to say that I have never seen a more universally agreed on thing in pro play than if there is a Renata on the enemy team, you take cleanse. So Noah's got some confidence. And it showed on Twitter. Damn, production, great transition. Um, yeah, he's just trash-talking wonder. Watching his VODs from back when he was, you know, successful. Except for the time that he played on Fnatic and helped them be very successful. Um, and wonder, obviously, you know, coming back. Hitting back. No need to run bot. We're winning bot both games. Which, I mean, again, they've got the Renata. They've got range advantage. Mayhaps, mayhaps it is enough for them to uh, to snowball this out without the intervention of top laners who are never going to go bot anyway, just to be clear. I don't, it was so weird you just to call out Wonder like that. Like you should have <laughs> yeah. gone after Yanko. Like no one goes bot. Happened Maybe he does time. now though. Maybe that's the whole We path, got double you know? TPs last week, Rob, yeah. when we were just going crazy. So uh, maybe it's a return to the 2018-2019 era of European League of Legends where it's just all TP bot all the time.
But it does feel like a return to 2018 Fnatic. Uh, honestly, sure. this has been the most successful that they've been since that era where they actually finished first in the regular season. They went on to win the whole season. And it feels like they are very much in our top two contenders and one of the teams that I'm looking at for that finals representation. So yeah. this is a game where I expect Fnatic to come out swinging, trying to fight back against what was a pretty devastating loss, as we heard from Humanoid on the, the interview, against G2. Certainly. And I think if they want to make that come to life, if they want this to be one of their best splits after, you know, last year, I think an excellent recovery despite a disastrous start. You need to keep doing things like making it to finals, making it to the top, going to international competition. Because yes, 2018 is the last time they won a title, but even 2019, it was close. You know, it was double best of five series against G2. It was on a knife's edge. But yeah, the, the trophy case from Fnatic, not nearly as full as it once was. So now just see, well, except, you know, Valorant had, had its moment. Don't want to take away from folks, or else we could have, you know, League of Legends. Not that Fnatic Valorant's going great either. Sorry, Fnatic. I'm not really, I'm really not trying, trying to drag well, we you. do like any, set the record any time we have an opportunity to talk about Boaster is just great. So oh, yeah, it's just fine. Boaster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so anyway, uh, I was talking to Boaster the other day. I'm wondering, <laughs> getting aggressive. Oscar and trying to keep push up here. This is the healing reduction matchup, but I think they're both just not going to build healing reduction and instead be content knowing that they will spend an eternity hitting each other to no effect. It's a Sisyphusian matchup, really. There's <laughs> The boulder's never getting up the hill, Rob. Yeah, Oscar and did end up crashing second wave, though, rather than third, so it doesn't get that reset that traditionally see now. Zviral. Flash. Zviral for early flash. Oh, the trash the tower! Oh! That was dirty! That... Overconfidence there from Razork, instantly punished. Zyro raffling straight to the bank. 300 gold lead. Spyro chance in the studio, love to hear it. After last week, you can understand why, but making good, punishing that mid lane gank. Fnatic, we talked about it in the draft. They're not really the team that needs to force anything, but it's, they still try to make the play happen in mid. And it costs them dearly. Big whoopsie. And the fact that Zyro now gets the reset, will be able to pick up a Dark Seal, come back into lane, have a good time against Humanoid is going to be massive. And it felt like, Yankos was almost expecting this. You could see he finished his clear three camps on topside and kind of poked his head into River. So they're expecting Razor to try and do something mid, but Zviro, he ends up getting caught here, but great charm on the flash to pick off Razor. And two terror shots was always needed. And it looks like he flashed out before the command dissonance came in and got away from the flail as well as we get the double reaction cam. Uh oh, uncertainty. Then certainty again, obviously successful. So just a bit awkward there. Maybe if the timing's a tiny, tiny bit better. And now he's a little bit closer to getting Mercs as well. So a defensive early item choice, expecting to get ganked again, knowing that he doesn't have Flash. But now gets to roam up first, gets Scuttle for Yankos. Razor has to be careful here. That's double Scuttle now for Yankos. Did have a reset, and will be able to move back into his own topside jungle as well as they look to respawn, so. Nice timing there from Yankos. He got a little bit of an advantage off the back of that kill onto Razork. Yeah. Um, but this is where, again, I think for Razork, it's a little bit unfortunate, but you can't really let it get to you too much. I still think you need to be starting to get good vision control on the spot side, trying to shut down Flacket, because especially as you start to go towards, you know, Static Shiv and you get the push, it's where Flacket's going to be very, very comfortable in this matchup. And if you end up in this position where you're able to skirmish early with the Zeri before Jinx really comes online, Heretics are going to be very happy with us. Certainly are. And I think freeing Trimia potentially to roam as well. Zeri also quick boots to purchase, something Aragon likes to talk about. You know, just gets you out of the lane faster, gets you up out of lane to roam to objectives where needed quicker. So if they want to do some more lane assignments on the fly, they can. But for now, like I said, on the bottom side of the map is Razork. Because Larry is relatively uncontested. Some pings from Trimby. Maybe he wanted to support there, but opts not to. As Oscar's keeping the pressure up topside. A lot of people are in mid lane, though. Even Flacket has okay. come to help Bit out. awkward for Oscar, though, because Wonder pulls the wave away, and now Yankos is just waiting. Flag, drag, goodbye. <laughs> what? Um, I... <laughs> when we say pro players have good wave manipulation, we rarely get an example that is so clear and tangible, and that's also not what we mean, based on the one we just saw. But in this case, that was great wave manipulation, and I think Oscar just kind of forgot that when the wave didn't hit the tower, that he might be a a bit vulnerable. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't looking at the main screen. I was looking at the mini map because I was like, there's nothing that's there's gonna nothing happen gonna here. There's nothing that's gonna proxy a wave and so we're gonna be fine. 
Um, all right. <laughs> yeah, remember that the minions need to get to the tower before the tower will shoot the minions. If you go first, they'll shoot you. Uh, so, a learning moment for all of us. This Black had locked up. The cleanse, though, he still gets hit by the CC. Follow-up is there. A few more stacks coming in for Razor. We got the flash out from Black, that's going to be big. The cleanse as well. Nice little gank on the bottom side for Fnatic. So despite an early hiccup in the mid lane for Razor, he's still getting active on the map. And as you highlighted, Rob, going bot lane where that attention is needed. I mean, great job. The fact that you end up burning the cleanse before Razark arrives as well means that Flacket has to flash away from the flail. Otherwise, he'll end up CC'd again. Will go down. So getting both summoner spells there. And here, Yanko's just trying to get some control back on the bot side. Realizes that you really want to shove in this wave and give her an opportunity for Flacket to reset. But um, at least find that space on the bottom side of the map. Yeah. Despite the kill, however. Uh, wonder. Battle. Okay, looking at that. Razor still had an XP. That's his level six. The follow up is there. Excellent handshake comes in for Trimby, but even with the bailout, they don't have the damage. Now we're going to grab that kill. Let's the buff expire. Well played on the bottom side. A massive for Fnatic as well. They really want Noah to be the one leading the charge here, and getting those early kills is going to help out decisively in this matchup. Great repeat gang from Fnatic. And again, no sums on Flack, it means. With Jun having level six right around the corner, the second that ignite is off cooldown, they just go again. Trimby holding the wave as best he can just to try to get some control to get some more resources for Blackit, but it's gonna get trickier and trickier, at least for the next few minutes until those summoners are back online and available. So while there are two pretty massive whoopsie moments for Fnatic in the early game, things are otherwise going quite well. The gold is dead even, yes, but the gold for Fnatic kind of where they want it to be on the bottom side of the map. Need to see if Zvyro, speak of the devil, flag, drag, cataclysm, Razork, still living, forcing the flash out from Zvyro. One more stack. Nice pick in the jungle. And that's what I was about to say. I think a lot of this now is with Zvyro hitting six, he can actually get access to work with Yankos. And great example there. Zvyro has really stepped up over the last couple of games that Heretics have played. And coming into this as well now, leading the charge for Yankos. Beautiful stuff there from the mid laner. Strong point on the map. They need to keep this going. They can't just let bot lane sit quietly, especially with that sum deficit. They need to make sure that they're continuing to get more as Oscar and Wonder trading back and forth. Wonder might be in a similar situation. He just gets killed! What is happening top lane? I'm so, I, did I miss? <laughs> was there a seminar? Did we just agree we are going to fight to the death? This is supposed to be the wet noodle fight, Rob. They're supposed to just heal infinitely and never die, and yet both of them have died before we're even 10 minutes they into the game. They just forgot to boil the noodles. Now they're just stabby things. <laughs> they just whack at each other with them. But I don't know. This is this is kind of crazy, to be honest. The fact that you've now given a kill a piece over in that top side, especially just sticking around that little bit too long, and Fnatic as well being able to secure with that early aggression on the bottom side of the dragon for themselves, it's definitely starting to come up more and more Fnatic. That it is. Gold difference tiny. Uh, one buff to one in terms of the grubs. Wonder's going to grab another plate. This time, hopefully, it won't cost him his life. He's going to tunnel away and proxy a wave without taking tower aggro. Crucial for learning. <laughs> for those who are uh, following along at home, looking to implement some of these pro play strategies into your solo queue. Um, probably has another tunnel here in a second. Okay, th reminder this is what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. All right. Void thing and you have hollow radiance wonder wonder you're gonna start tanking the tower Guys, I mean you get the plate if normally you can get the plate, we don't it's cast worth. this lane because nothing there we go. happens Okay, I look he does take a couple of terror shots, but that is actually decent for wonder the fact you get the turret plate yes. You get to prox the yes. wave you're gonna reset. I'm all on board of this one last one a little bit of a whoopsie No, no, no. I, I'm with you now starting to roam mid as well as Viro very far forward in the wave. I think trying to set up for potential charm play here with Wonder coming over the wall, but Wonder just going to steal away a camp instead. So at least Heretic's top side are starting to push back and trying to get some control. But I think you have to start to lean that into, hey, let's shut down Noah a bit more because again, Jinx is going to be a menace as this game goes on. Certainly is. Wonder again, proxying away. We'll go into one of his many tunnel options. Humanoid now looking to come in. Wonder gonna go for the knockup. Ball is there, they're taking their time, however. Wonder can immediately try to ult to get out of the way, but he's just gonna accept his fate. Bit question, there's no one else on the map right now. They finally have mid priority. They're gonna try to transition into the bottom side of the map, but it's just uh, it's a bit loosey goosey here in our I'm first game of the day. I'm trying to figure out if Wonder needed gold for an item or something, or his boots or something along those lines. Maybe he was just shy and was like, oh, I'll proxy one more wave and got punished first. Cause it does feel like he's just slightly short in his Merc thread, so it assumed that's the case. 
but big mistake again two deaths now that were completely unnecessary and giving now those turret plates back over to oscar in so this dude here getting a lot more control up in this matchup and as well getting razor and humanoid involved was just great for Fnatic. definitely again wonder now finally here but this is about three plates oscar gonna stick around oh he wants to stick around for the third plate but that little melee minion not quite enough Wonder trying to extend this trade. Again, it's so hard to get any meaningful damage here. And, and they now go they back just to go back to hitting the minions, yeah. Udyr has a, has a biscuit, so he has mana if he needs it. And so nothing is really going to happen. But now, a lane where people can die and are supposed to die, bot lane. Nothing else is going to happen. Dang it, we're back to top again! I don't want to be here, but no one else is doing anything! <laughs> Hey, look, Humanoid was starting to roam up there. Maybe they thought something was going to happen. Heretics also kind of roaming bot side, but not really making anything happen. Now, Zyro here right. with friends. Can he get onto Humanoid? Nankos gets the bailout movement speed. We'll just back off. Set up for a bit of a fight here on the bottom side. Humanoid can collapse here. But he might be a little bit late to the exchange. Black is going to get there first. Fire is already altered. Hostile takeover comes out. Noah forced to flash to safety. The slow coming in from the glacial prison is big. It buys a bit more space. Spyro still stew tax remaining. Trying to finish off Jun. Knockup from Jun is there. Spyro hits the charm onto the Nautilus. Looking for the reset. Jun is taken down. One more dash for Spyro. Goes in. Tries to get another. Flack and finds that kill. Trimby taken out. But here comes Oscar. And that is one fast bear man. Flack and no cleanse left. Getting knocked up. But they don't have the damage. Flack is still waiting over the wall. They're trying desperately to finish this area. The Udyr will not die. But he also cannot dive the tower. In the meantime, Wonder taking place, but the play continues. Oscar trying to keep them here, trying to usher them under the, the tower. Fumanoid ready, wants to finish these kills. They're so damn low, but someone needs to do the damage. Flacken trying to dash to safety, but Oscar with Razork behind him goes in, but Flacken's still living, and Trimby is here. It's a mess on the bottom side, but Fnatic get what they came for. Fnatic come out on top. They get the wave in time to find the picks, to find the plates as well as Trimby comes back, and it started off looking so favorably for Heretics. And I thought this was going to re be a repeat of what we saw Fnatic in G2, early skirmishes going the way of the opposition, but Fnatic managing to turn it around. Despite that, Wonder gets so much on the top side. It's still a 3-1 Ari. There's now a TP bot side. The play's not done. Humanoid's got no mana. You got no mana? Flash out. Oh my nice God. on the charm. Anticipation tries to sidestep, but the shutdown is there from Swyro. He's waited long enough. He's got a flash two matches and gets the kill. Fnatic though, this looked like it could have gone so dodgy. Noah is completely separated from the squad. And again, doesn't really have the, the damage that he wants here. So you're looking at a Jinx that doesn't really do much. Humanoid doesn't really have the damage, especially when the shockwave is flashed away from by Heretics. And then Noah caught in the pit, nobody to help. Swyro able to deal damage onto the top side, but it's a TP from Oscar Inan that makes all the difference. He has the E, Passive, which means he's not getting CC'd. Yep. But Fnatic, we're back in towards this Rift Herald fight. TP from Humanoid. Herald taking Black at nice sidestep. High is there. Flag and drag through four. That's a solid start. The damage is now coming in. Flag and untouched as the rest of his team is such an excellent distraction. Double for the Yari. Flag and picks up the third. Team Heretics take the fight. Six and one for Zviro. This Ari has been putting in work in these fights and these early skirmishes are fantastic for Heretics. This is exactly where we said they wanted to find their success and Fnatic are fighting them and giving them those moments. It's kind of a bit of a head scratcher for Fnatic. We didn't really get the context of the setup on that play. Maybe he felt like they had to go for the 50-50 not to give the Herald away, but as a result, they overcommit to a fight and they lose so much. I think the idea was, hey, we saw Ari TP bot side. We can now fight this because Humanoid will respawn. We can TP him in and we can take the fight. If they're caught in the pit, maybe we can do something, but Heretics aren't. Black and Peace is out. Yankos with a great flag and drag. And Zviru repositioning with the ultimate to get direct access to Noah. And remember what we said, I mean, you don't have the damage as Fnatic right now if Noah goes down. Yes, you might get a big shockwave from Humanoid, but that was already used. So the consistent DPS for Fnatic was eliminated, and Heretics take him on. Pyro. Oh, Charm! Charm! Hits him! Absolute edge of the hitbox, dashes in! He's just too damn good. I, what can't he play? It used to be, what can he play? What can this man do? Picks up Nico, it's great. Picks up Azir, it's great. Now a third champion to add to the list. The Ari taking over this game. And this is exactly what we wanted from Heretics. 
early aggression, seen them fight against Fnatic from the get-go. And it's off the back of the rookie. I mean, Zwyra again. What is with Ari yeah. and rookies in our league popping off in this champion? And look, I don't want to oversell this guy. It's his first split. But how can you look at the last time these teams played, at the last series he played on the Azir or at this game and not get a little bit excited about the potential of this player? Again, it's it's just so damn clean. Absolute edge of the hitbox. Yeah, and Heretics are using this moment to try and trade for the top tower. So they kind of like, look, we're not going to be able to hold on to it. Let's make a play on mid. Noah stepping that too far up. And Zyru, great mechanics there to catch him with the charm. And now Noah left alone under this tower. Human is going to get here a little bit, but don't know if he can get the tower. Actually, yeah, with Rift Herald, they definitely should be able to. And now it's Human I do shadowing Noah. Jun down on the bottom side, maybe they're hoping to get the pick there. They're going to concede the tower. We'll see where this Herald goes as Yankos goes adrifting. I need a, a theme song one. Yeah, yeah, we, need a, we need, really yeah. need an alternative music cue for Herald drifting. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, 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 okay. He's that guy. You know him. We've all been there. We've all messed it up countless times. I'm pretty sure Yankos did it in his yeah, first game Yankos with this patch. Did, yes, he did. <laughs> He's, he's mounting it again. This is a little bit crazy. Oh, this is com wait a sec. This is Wonder, actually. Excuse me, not Yankos. He just wanted a We're piece. just giving credit for Yankos. <laughs> We're just giving the credit to Yankos, guys. Wonder's the top laner. They don't get credit for anything. No, that was all Wonder. So, whoops. <laughs> just assume that the jungler was in there. It's the top it's laner. It's a Rek'Sai. It's, it's yeah. understandable. Wonder, yeah. not a big fan of uh, the top laners aren't important narrative. Really <laughs> making, needs to make a contribution after his tragic go to start. I do like the way those heretics are playing this though, because a huge amount of this has been, hey, we understand what Fnatic are going to play on the map for, and we're going to try and go against it. Fnatic go to play, make the play on top tower because they know they can have a numbers advantage there. Fantastic. We can't defend that as heretics. We're going to make a play on Noah mid. We get mid terror. Then as everyone starts to drift across the mid to defend us, we immediately rotate onto the bot side as well to get that terror with the rift So heretics at the moment are matching a lot of what Fnatic are doing in the map or learning, hey, we can actually play for a cross map off this and trade up on the map. Noah, a little far forward, but he sees some recalls and he spots already on the bottom side, so it feels like he has the room to do so, but a ward beautifully placed in the mid lane there. Keeping information on Noah. Has to be careful about stepping too far up as Team Heretics get the vision control on the top side. And my concern, honestly, Rob, is as we get later, when Ari is this far ahead, you normally look at Ari as a team who isn't going to scale as hard, right? But she's so far ahead of the curve. Fnatic are going to need so much time. And now you have these fights for Fnatic where it's like, all right, well, do you not assault the Zeri? Or do you not assault the Ari? Because it's really hard to lock either of them down for this team. They have one form of reliable point-and-click CC and two incredibly mobile champions who are very strong. But even if you do ult one of them, where's the follow-up damage? Humanoid sure has a little bit with two items, but Noah's got a single item in his pocket. He doesn't really do a huge amount with the Kraken Slayer and Oscar in him. Oscar. Locked up here. Might have been a bit premature from Yankos. Damage from Ari is good, though. I take it back. Zyro is so damn strong, and there's no MR for Oscar. Just the magic damage feels like true damage. And then there's the true damage on top of that. Flag and Drag is going to go a little bit wide. Oscar. Feels like it's 2014 again, because he's trying to open the gates. Little Oscar 2G here, as he just uh, keeps this one going. Yanko's trying to give him the cane, but it's not really working out for him so hot right now. All right, the slow comes in, the charm will follow, there it Oscar is. will die. A noble effort, he buys a lot of space. Trademark, at least see it. Um, and uh, yeah. It might have just been a really bad time to do that, though, because Dragon is in 20 seconds. If he had actually just died, he would have been back up and been able to see to the fight. Now, you don't have a top laner for the start of this objective, and you're going to be able to push out Wonder, that top wave, and then immediately group on towards mid to contest that as well. So I think actually one of the moments where Oscar and you should have probably just accepted Except your fate. Yeah. It's tricky. You train your whole life not to die in pro games. Sometimes it's the correct choice. Won't be up in time, but Fnatic still have priority, still have control. Again, got a lot of free time to take control of these waves. And now they're using that to layer down a bit of vision. Team Heretics have to be ready to face check. They don't quite have the same beefy front line without Noah in the area. Lock up into Yankos is good, but the buffer on the flag and drag takes him out. Hook goes wide from Jun. Team Heretics, good information now on where all of Fnatic is, but it's Fyro on the flank. Not spotted out by vision yet. Yeah, he's just playing off the wars that were already established by Heretics earlier, so. Heretic's now going to start to move in, but... Just taking a tower yeah, in the meantime. I think they're just going to go for the objective. Go tier two dragon. mid. Fnatic are committing so much here. I guess Dragon is the backup scaling plan, but you've lost one tower. You're likely to lose another now. Extra attack speed coming in from the Demacian standard. And All right, two towers for a Drake. This is sick macro from Heretics. 
This is something that I love to see. The fact that they're willing to go, hey, there is an objective up, but we can actually get more by bypassing it and going for something to trade up with. You, yes, you give it a little bit of power to Fnatic, but you get so much more off the back of it. And now with the position you're in, you're like, we litter wards on the top side, we can continue pushing waves, we get a ton of Baron control. And with how fed Zyro is, you cannot hold that bot terror as humanoid. And Zyro may be about to demonstrate this. Zyro, excellent charm. The damage on a humanoid. Zyro doesn't want to follow up. I feel like Humana getting the Ari ultimate out before any objective is is solid as long as you can keep his life. I think it's also because they want to try and hold Zvairu for a side lane split push. And the reason that Ari is so strong in that regard is because she has the ult to escape if you put resources there. So yes, Zvairu could have gone for the play and got the kill, but it actually makes him more vulnerable and hurts in the long run. So good heads up play by Zvairu being able to look forward and maybe look at Humanoid now. Nice back step on the shockwave, but Humanoid, of course, is just trying to clear the wave sure that the follow-up isn't there. Noah, you can see how far back he's been pushed. He's now checking the Baron. Oh, you have to feel for an ad here. They have no information. They need so much time just to farm, just to get money for Noah, for Humanoid. Just using whatever cooldowns they can to keep oh, information boy. up. This is great shadowing. Uh, they know that Oscar Renan doesn't have the TP, so if you end up seeing both members of Fnatic down the bot side, you can just go not do damage to Wonder, and now Spyro's following up. That's the flash out, but the knockup is there. Immediate charm! The commitment! Oh, nothing that Humanoid can do. He gets a bit of damage back, and the rest of Team Heretics are starting the Baron. This is absolutely psycho. Most teams make one play on the map, not two at the same time. And Fnatic, they finally found Wonder. They've committed all their resources, but it's a big, fat, Distraction! Team Heretics outplaying and outthinking Fnatic in game one. Heretics have the biggest brains in this game. It is so cool to watch. The fact they're like, hey, Oscar Renan doesn't have TP. If he shows face bot, here's the flow chart. We TP into Baron. If he doesn't show bot lane, we dive because he has to be with the rest of the team because he doesn't have Baron. It's just great decision making off the back of the information that Heretics are playing with. And it's so good to see. This has been so well orchestrated by Heretics. This is the best game they've played in all the playoffs. 100%. 100%. And again, it's it's the series versus SK was messy. The series against BDS was tragic. So it's not saying a lot, but it's important to understand how good this game has been. Of course, they're snowballing. So we'll need to see what it looks like maybe in a closer game state as we head to game two. But right now, Fnatic aren't out, but they're damn close in this game. But it's also off the back of Zyro. These kills, this aggression, this pressure has been created from this mid laner, and they're playing with them beautifully. Wonder is literally just sitting in his back pocket, and now they pick Razork. No, but they'll steal away and a, a camp anyway. But it's a case of Zyro kind of calling the shot, saying, hey, let's work together on this one, and let's try and play around how fed I am with three items on this Ari now. These pressure that he can have solo in a lane, or if Wonder shows up, is incredible, and nobody on Fnatic can really deal with it right now. I mean, he's just not going to, as long as you don't pick bad fights, I just don't think that Fnatic have a lot of agency to actually get a kill. They can limit his impact, but it's really hard to shut him down unless you have Joan in the area. It's a bit easier as Humanoid gets closer to a death cap of his own. That's only his third item, though. Team Heretics pressing forward with Baron. They don't have the best sieging composition, but their split push is pretty lethal. As you can see Wonder here. Again, they send Humanoid to hold him, but Wonder went Hollow Radiance first item. He uh, does not take a lot of damage. And now he just moves to mid. And the thing is, for Wonder and Zyro, you're both so non-committal in these plays, because Wonder is just going to be able to tunnel his way out of here. you got Zyro, he's still got ultimate to walk away. So Fnatic are being pulled every which direction, but there's no real pressure onto Heretics. Zyro, they force the alt out at least. And clear the mid wave. Bot wave gonna fall away shortly. 51 seconds. This next wave in mid is gonna be big. All of Fnatic now grouping to try to deny it. Team Heretic sadly don't have a sync on multiple waves, so it looks like this is where the plays will stop, the push will stop. They have one more in bot to play off of. Because they're staggered, however, it's easy for Fnatic to five-man match, and that's why Wonder and Spyro are stepping up now. Buy a bit more time to take a bit more resources from Fnatic. All decommitted. Spyro doesn't have all. Hook is there from Jun, but there's no damage follow-up. They finally hit him, they finally locked down the Ari, but the rest of the team is nowhere to be seen, and now it's the hostile take. Over. Now it's an absolute slaughter because Flackhead has all the room he needs to do Zeri things. The rest of Team Heretics stepping up. Charm going wide from Zyro, but it does not matter. Inhibitor down, inhibitor to follow. Team Heretics playing out of their minds in this game one. This is a different team to what we saw last weekend. Incredible performance. Once again, Zyro 
playing with so much confidence. It was messy in the early game. On both sides, but here, mid to late, the moment that already got this lead, it has been all Team Heretics Wonder holding on to life for an extra second. They're praying for the reset. They're praying for a kill. They're praying for some KDA because that's all they can hope for in game one on the side of Fnatic. And this series is wide open now. Heretics with an incredible game one, looking so dominant. And it's not like a lucky roll of the dice. This was, hey, we are playing off of the early skirmishes. We know our composition's better with that. And we're going to lean that into 1-3-1, one, one, side lane pressure, which Viru is massive. It was an incredible game, no doubt. We'll have to see how Fnatic adapt what they can bring to the table in game two as we head to a quick break. When we return, the AD can break that one down. Can talk about the rest of the series. Even the biggest champ needs a break. I'm tired. Me too. So, uh, what do you think? On to the next one? Let's go. Come on. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Hey, you got a pick. Tom Kent? What? I, I was not expecting this. Crazy off made a pick that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. 